Hello everyone, and welcome to the third chapter of our Flutter course. In this chapter, I thought maybe we could focus a little bit on, um, actually not a little bit, but quite a lot on Dart. Uh, as you know from the previous chapter, we know now that Dart is the programming language that um, powers uh, Flutter. So it would be a good idea for us at least to get a little bit of introduction to Dart, how it works, a little bit of its internals, different data types, functions, methods, classes. And for this chapter as well, um, just like the entire course, I'm kind of assuming that you haven't done any programming at all before. So I'm going to take things very slowly, uh, take the concepts one at a time, introduce them to you. So, um, and I will give you some references to read more about the topics as um, we won't have really that much of a time in this course to go into detail about everything. So um, the goal of this chapter is to basically get you started with programming uh, Dart uh, and writing your apps then later for Flutter. In order to do that, we need to have a, a project uh, set up. <clears throat> and by project, I mean, you need to have some kind of a playground set up so that you can start writing dark code and then you can try it on, for instance, a telephone or a simulator or what have you. Now, um, a lot of people would rather go to dark pad as we saw in the previous chapter and start writing their code in dark pad. Um, that's one way of doing it. But since in this chap, in this, per uh, in this course, we're going to, write an application, release it for iOS and Android, uh, it is safe to say that that we can literally start actually creating our real project here and now so that we can then later build upon it rather than writing all our code in Dartpad because you can then, by doing by writing your code in an actual Flutter project, you can get used to how we work with uh, Flutter as a whole. So I think this is a little bit of a time invested into later chapters as well, where we're going to work and continue working on the same project. So we have to just set it up once. But at the same time, um, there is a little bit of a value in not blending in too much of our um, test code, like what we're doing in this chapter with what we're going to do later in the actual application, if you know what I mean. So. So I think it would be better now for us to set up just a test application and then keep working on it. And then later on, when we start doing the actual application, then we create a separate project for that. So now let's then do that together. So I'm going to bring uh, my face down here so you see the entire, app, uh, entire screen. I'm then going to create a new terminal window and bring it up here on the screen so you can see it. And I'm going to increase the font so it's a little bit easier to spot what I'm typing. So let's go to a folder where you try to or where you keep your uh, projects. For me, I go to dev projects and I have a folder there called Flutter. So, so I try to put all my uh, Flutter projects in here. Then in order to create a new Flutter project, uh, what you have to do is to issue the Flutter uh, create command. And this create command is already shipped inside Flutter. So if you say which Flutter, this is going to go and find the actual Flutter binary, if you remember from the previous chapters where we installed uh, Flutter. Um, it's going to find the Flutter binary and then call the create command on it. So if we say Flutter create, it expects you to kind of like uh, provide it with some sort of a name of a project. So let's just say learning Dart. Learning, learning Dart. So that's the binary, that's the command, and that is the name of the project. Okay, so uh, this is the easiest way to create a new Flutter, Flutter project, in my opinion, at least. So let's execute that command. It's going to do its thing. Um, and what I'm going to do then is to, as you can see, it's created a new folder called Learning Dart. So let's go and I'm going to say CD Learning Dart. 
and then I'm going to issue a command called code dot and I can actually bring this a little bit to the right so you can and also do it like this so you can see what I'm typing as you can see I've written code dot and what code does is that it brings up visual studio code so it's just like a command that you can issue in order to bring up visual studio code and um if if i just bring up visual studio code uh the way it is right now and for instance you can see it you can't see it right now but uh, it's because i have a separate uh screen here i'll bring up visual studio code as you can see here by hand there is a good extension or there is an ability for Visual Studio Code to install this code uh, shortcut for you in terminal in your path. So if, if you say which code, it just says user local bin code. So it's just an executable that allows you then to open up Visual Studio Code with a path. Like So you can say open up Visual Studio Code in this folder. So you can just say code um, dot. So. Um, and you can do that in Visual Studio Code. You can allow that to be installed by doing um, Command Shift P on Macintosh or Control Shift P, I, I believe, in Windows and um, Linux. And there's this little command here that says shell command, install code command in path. So if you execute that once, then it's already set up for you. You don't have to do that anymore. So if you'd like to be able to say code dot in terminal and open the current folder, within Visual Studio Code without you having to open Visual Studio Code manually and then doing file open, then I suggest that you do Command Shift P or Control Shift P in Visual Studio Code, depending on which operating system you're using, and then choosing shell command install code, code uh, command in path. So I've already done that, so I can just say code dot. Uh, and I'll bring this up here. So as you can see, this is the basics of a simple um, um, Flutter project that you create with Flutter Create. Now, Visual Studio Code has a built-in terminal, so I don't have to have this terminal window open anymore, so I'm just going to close it, okay? And I'm going to make this full screen, increase the size a little bit so you can see better, and perhaps I could even remove this Flutter uh, logo on top right so you can see the content a little bit better as well. So that's the creation of our simple Flutter project. Now, in order for this Flutter project to run and you be able to run this uh, application and like te keep testing your uh, project, uh, you would have to select a target. And you do that with Command-Shift-P and then choosing Flutter Select Device. So you can just say Flutter Select Device, Enter. Command-Shift-P is on Macintosh and Control-Shift-P, I believe, is in Lin Linux and Windows. So do that, command shift P is a very important command. You're gonna use it quite a lot in this uh, course. So just learn that, please. Um, then I'm gonna say select device and I'm gonna choose, since I'm on, a, I'm on a Macintosh and as you saw earlier, we have Xcode already installed. Xcode comes also with the entire iOS SDK uh, and also with the simulator. I can choose to run our application on iOS simulator um, or I can choose to run it on an actual phone. Now for this, um, I believe, I don't know if we've talked already about SCRCPY to be honest with you. I'm just gonna search in my notes um, to see if you've talked about that. And if you just give me one second, please, I'll just check here. I believe we're, we're gonna set it up in chapter six. So we haven't set up SCRCPY yet. So for that purpose, I'm just going to say select device and I'm just going to say start iOS simulator. So that is going to, as you can see, start up iOS simulator. And that for now is like the best way for us to test our application. So while this is connecting, um, I can show you a little bit around as well. We have, as you can see, lots of files here already created for us. We're going to go through some of these. Um, but one of the most important files that you're gonna need to get used to, used to is this lib slash main.dart. And this is where like the majority of the code is written. So uh, this is its contents at the moment. Um, let's see what it's doing with the simulator. I'm just gonna have a look here. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer than expected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna 
kill the io simulator manually this shouldn't this usually doesn't happen but that's okay if it does happen then you know how to deal with it just close the simulator um and then i'm just gonna go to command shift p select device and then start io simulator fresh so it's starting right now okay so that's our simulator and i'm actually going to decrease the size of this a little bit since i realize that it is a very large font so this is our main dart file this is like where the flutter uh command line um command has created it is the file that has been created for us so we don't have to play around with it too much to be honest with you at the moment um for the purpose of this chapter we're just going to have a look at um basically kind of like exploiting this uh, code so that we can inject our code into it so we can learn Dart a little bit. So you don't have to understand all of this code the way it is right now. There's lots of comments and etc. So, So that's that part. So now that we're here and then you can see we have a little simulator here. And in order to run this application on this simulator, since you've already done the flutter select command, you just go to run and you say run without debugging for now. So since the simulator is already selected, then it understands that it needs to compile this project for my simulator. So, um, and we're just going to give it some time, depending on your machine and like what you have for specifications on your machine. This, this command could take anywhere between uh, a couple seconds to maybe 30 seconds or even more. And I'm not sure how long it's going to take for a fresh Flutter project, to be honest with you, to start running on the simulator. But it took about 21 seconds, so or 22 seconds. So um, I will bring up the project now. And this is like the basic Flutter project. I'm not going to go into details about how it works, but you can press the plus button if you want to. So, But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to close this widget inspector that was opened uh, automatically. And I'm just going to bring this a little bit down so that we can see the debug console, okay? So that's for setting up our project. So that part is done. Now, the first thing that we need to talk about uh, when we start talking about uh, Dart is uh, the concept of keywords. Now, since I'm assuming that you haven't done any programming language in any other place before, um, you need to understand what keywords are. Uh, they're very important in understanding any programming language basically and keywords are um concise concisely explained there are words that are reserved for the programming language that you cannot use for anything else than what the programming language intends those words to be used as <laughs> i know that sounds a little bit difficult but mm, I mean, there's no real good analogy in like if you're coming from Figma, if you're coming from a design world, what a keyword could be, because in a design world, you're not really talking in terms of code with your product or with your uh, uh, software where you're designing your uh, stuff. But when you come to programming language, as you know, it's a language. So words mean stuff in, in, in a programming language. So a keyword is as its name indicates, is a word that has a special meaning in uh, that particular particular language. And I provide a link here for you that you can check out, but uh, I'm going to open it up and um, bring it to the screen here, increase the size a little bit so we can see better. Uh, have a look at my screen here. Yeah, and you can see this is a part of the documentation for Dart programming language that explains what keywords are in Dart. And you can see there are some words that have special meaning, like show, import, extends, async, await, break. So you can say that the language, the Dart language, is made out of these keywords. That is pretty much it. It's just like series of keywords, like the things that you tell the language that, hey, I want to do something. And then it says, okay, what do you want to do? Then you say, okay, I want to do this or this or this. So special words for the programming language so that it understands what you mean, basically. So that's for keywords. Um, for now, we don't have to really go into so much more details about what a keyword is. But for now, just understand that a keyword is a special word in the programming language, language's brain kind of so that you can talk to it. It's your interface with the programming language to make it understand what you want to do, okay? 
And please check out the link that I've provided here to understand more about keywords. Okay, so we've talked about keywords. I'm just gonna check it in my notes so that um, we know we've talked about it. Now, the next concept that we need to talk about are um, data types. Um, if you, for instance, come from a design background, then you have different tools to work with. For instance, you may have in your design system, whatever you're using, if you're, if you're using a product from Adobe or if you're using, for instance, Figma or whatever, uh, Visio or whatever tool you're using, then there's like a set of components that you can work with. For instance, you can drag in a text field or you can drag in an image field or, sorry, an image, or you can, for instance, assign, um, assign a color to a text. So these are all like things that you can do with that uh, software. Now, a data type in, in a programming language like Dart is the type of a thing. For instance, you would say, I have some data in my mind. Okay, what is it? It's the first name of a of my friend. Okay, his name is uh, Jack or whatever. Um, and then you would say, okay, what type is Jack? Is it a number? No. Is it like, um, is it a list of things? Well, yeah, it's a list of uh, characters. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then it's, that is a data type. Or you could say, um, I'm thinking about my age. Um, my age is, let's say I'm uh, 37. Okay, what is 37? Is it a list of things? Well, yeah, kind of. It's a list of numbers, a list of digits, but it's also in itself a number. So then there has been this convention, uh, like a convention in different programming languages, and every programming language, language pretty much that you can use these days has this concept of data types. Data type is, as its name indicates, a, a specific, specific name assigned to to a series, a specific name assigned to a data that is bound to be of a specific type as well. So for instance, in Dart, you have uh, data types called integers, or you have strings, or you have arrays and sets, which we'll talk about soon. But a data type, just for now, no, it's just a stamp on a piece of data to say that you're of this specific type. So you could think of a data, data type as a nationality. You could say like every person coming from Sweden is Swedish. Boom, that's a data type. So it's just a categorization of data based on their appearance or based on what they actually hold. So uh, for instance, you can say, here's a university full of engineers and uh, there, these are software engineers, these are mechanical engineers. So the software engineer is a data type it, or is a person type or category type. So putting st stamps on things based on the categorization is kind of what data type does. And um, in short, I mean, you just have to know that it's just a categorization of things based on what they hold. So, and there's, uh, and there's a website that you can read about uh, dark data types and it's right here. Uh, I don't know if you've I've, if I've provided it here on, uh, on the link below, as you can see, Dart Core Library HTML. So, um, and here you can read more about Dart data types, um, but we're not going to go into so much detail about all of these right now. Just know that uh, data type in Dart is, or any programming language basically uh, that has data types, is a categorization of data based on their appearance or contents. Now. Let's talk a little about uh, something called constants in Dart. Um, a constant, uh, usually in programming language uh, languages, are values uh, whose value cannot be changed. <laughs> That's a little bit meta, but uh, let's say, for instance, the value of um, value of ten. It's a number. It cannot be changed. 10 is 10, and it will always be 10. Um, or your name, that is a constant. Although you can go and change it, but as long as that is your name, it is a constant. So um, another example of a, I mean, there are so many values that can be constants, which will actually be quite uh, abstract for me to be able to explain right now. But just know that a constant is a value whose uh, 
internal data cannot change during the during where you're writing your program and also during when you're running your program. So um, that is kind of what a constant is. Uh, but there is also this uh, notion of a compile time constant and a runtime constant. And I, I mean, you don't have to know about uh, like those different types of constants right now, just because like in Dart, a constant is a constant, whether it's runtime or compile time is constant is just just a constant as you'll see soon but uh, i still believe that it's important to understand the difference between compile time and runtime um when you're talking about programming and when you're becoming software developer and i hope by the end of this course you'll actually become a software developer if you're not already um that would be really amazing uh but the notion of a compile time and a and runtime is very important to understand. And developers like to um, make a distinction between whether something has happened during compile time or something has happened during runtime. And compile time is, uh, or before I explain compile time, maybe I should explain compile. Compile is where you take the program that you're writing here and you tell the computer that I want you to package this up so that I can run it later on x and y machine so the process of packaging things up simply said is in very simple terms is called compiling or a compilation okay so um from where you start writing your program with hand with your fingers until where you package it you're pretty much just compiling it okay but when you run it like we're running it at the moment on uh ios simulator that session from where you start outputting your program into this device and for it to run your program from that moment on, then the distinction separates into runtime. So you have then compile time and runtime, and a constant is a value that is the same during compile time and runtime. So its value doesn't change. So the value of 10 is 10 while you're writing your program and also stays the value of 10 while the program is running. So that is a, a very simple explanation of a constant. So now let's put um, constants and data types uh, in practice. Now in this project that was created for you by uh, Flutter Create, in this, in this line of code, uh, as you can see, it says void main. We're not going to talk about exactly what that is, but just press enter at the end of it and just uh, write uh, final. And I'm going to tell you what final is soon. And just say name is equal to foo. Okay. This is, there's lots going on in here and I'm going to tell you um, what is actually happening here. Um, but I, before before we actually go through all these details, let's let's add something here called a constant. So I'm just going to say const age is 27, or yeah, 27. As you can see, this is how you write code in Dart. You start by a keyword, usually, or a variable name or something, as we're going to talk about it. Uh, but const is a keyword, okay? Uh, and it tells Dart that what is following here is a name right after const, I'm gonna write some name. And in that name, then I'm gonna basically say, okay, I'm adding the value of 27 to this uh, uh, H. I'm sorry about this, my dog also barking a little bit. So what is happening here is that you're telling Dart that I'm putting the value of 27 into a constant call H. Um, and you can refer to this H later, for instance, you can say, uh, then const <clears throat> age uh, twice the age. And you can say it's equal to age multiplied by two. And this is also a constant because at compile time, where Dart is basically trying to understand what you've written, it says, okay, you said 27, and then you're saying 27 is a constant, so its value is never going to change. And if you tell me 27 mi uh, multiplied by two, that also is a constant because both this side and this side are compile time constants. Uh, 
So that's that's what we mean by a constant. It's a value that is specified during compile time and it and it cannot change. So also it's important to note it notice that you're learning Dart in um, here is sorry, I have to just take some items in my notes to make sure that I've explained all of those to you. Um, you can see here that every line of code in Dart needs to end with a semicolon. And that tells Dart that, yeah, you're starting a new line of code. Of course, you can put two lines of code like this, but if you just press save, there is a program automatically running in the background, which is called Dart FMT, which is the Dart formatter, which is gonna format your code and prefy it. So if I like put a lot of spaces in here and just press save, you can see upon doing Command S on Mac or Control S on Linux and Windows, upon saving, Dart Formatter is going to kick in and format the code for you. So just a little hint. Um, OK, those are constants. So we've talked about that. Um, now let's talk about variables a little bit. A variable is uh, usually anything that contains a value that is not a constant. I mean, I think that's like the simplest way of explaining what a variable is. Um, a variable, as its name indicates, it can vary. Uh, and that means that it, the data that it holds, it doesn't need to be constantly the same. It means that from where you start the program, you may actually assign a value to this variable, and you may also change that variable depending on what type of variable it is. Um, so there's also... Um, this notion of uh, a final variable in uh, Dart, which we'll talk about soon. So before we do that, let's go to this main function here. And you could just say um, var name is uh, foo. And here, what I've done is that I've created a variable indicated by the var keyword uh, whose value is foo, or let's just say Alex and semicolon to end the line. Now, if I want to change this value, all I could say here is to say name is equal to Anthony or whatever. Now, this is basically us assigning a new value to this variable, saying Anthony. Um, as I said, there is also a uh, no, the notion in uh, Dart for a keyword called uh, final. So you could just say final name equal to Alex. And it's, it's a little bit strange because final is also a variable whose value cannot be changed. So you may be like, okay, what? Like what kind of a variable is that? Like how is that not a constant? Now there's a little limitation because you, you may try to like say const name Alex. Uh, but this, as you will see later in, in the... Uh, in the course, final gives you the flexibility to assign a value to your variable a little bit later, maybe in the process of creating it, but it still indicates to Dart that the value of this variable is not going to change after it has been assigned to. It's a little bit, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a little bit confusing maybe at the moment. So let's just say uh, a variable is like a constant but its value can be changed. Let's just leave it at that, okay? So uh, that's it. Okay, now that we talk a little bit about a uh, little, little bit about uh, uh, variables, let's talk about functions. So um, I didn't specify exactly what this is just because we hadn't really come to functions, but a function is uh, a body of code is a grouping of a series of lines of code, one to n number of n lines of codes that is logically uh, grouped. And it can it has a few properties. Uh, one is its return value here indicated by void. The other part of its information is its name, followed by a pair of parentheses an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis uh, in which you will write something called the function arguments or parameters. Um, it's pretty much just like, uh, imagine like 
a box where you input things in it. It does some processing and then it outputs that stuff, whatever it wants to output. So what we could do here is to create a very simple function for, for ourselves. By, mm, as, you see, as, as you saw before, or as, as I mentioned before, the, what you write for a function in the beginning is this data type. I mean, what data comes out of this function. And, um, and here, let's say we want to add someone's first name and their last name with a space between it. So if I say foo as the first name and bar as the last name, then the full name should be foo bar and with a space in between. So as I said, then you need to specify the data type first, what you're going to return. And if you looked at the documentation that I provided earlier, there's a data type called string which is a series of characters. Basically, it could be a name, a family name, a dress of your house or whatever. And that's a data type is string. Okay, so we say we're outputting string. And then you say, okay, what should this function be called? Um, there's a convention in Dart that your functions should follow uh, camel case uh, um, naming convention, basically. And camel case is if you, for instance, say in English, uh, my function should be called get full name. That's my function name, but you cannot have spaces in your function function names in Dart or pretty much every programming language that I know about. Then remove all the spaces, and then except for the first word, change all the cons uh, cons all the other words uh, first letter to uh, to uppercase. So it was like this before. You could actually change them to uppercase first, and then remove the spacing so this is this is how you should write your function names this is called camel case get full name okay we said that uh, we also have to open parentheses now let's just say then um here we need to uh, specify somehow that we're going to accept a first name and a last name well what kind of a data type does a first name have well it's kind of like a string. It's a name. It's a series of characters. So let's just type string here. And then we want to take a first name and we know about camel case now. So let's just say first name, make this uppercase and remove the spacing. So first name. Hey, that's the parameter. And then you want to go to the next parameter. So just say comma. Uh, and then you want to say string last name. You take the first name and the last name. Now, we also said that after the parentheses, after you've accepted your parameters, you want to go and create like your curly brackets here. I don't know actually if I mentioned that before, but every function is either uh, its body or its logic. It's either uh, followed by equal uh, graded and sign, which we're going to talk about later, or uh, is by curly brackets. So we're just going to use curly brackets. Now, there, what you want to do here, you want to take the first name and add a space to the first name and then follow that by the last name. So you need to you, you need to tell Dart that that is the data you want to return. And thankfully, there is a, um, there is a keyword called return that tells Dart that you want to return some value from a function. So then what you're going to do, you're going to say, I want to return what? The first name and I want to add a space. Single quotes, the space, plus last name, right? So, I mean, this is a very simple Im implementation of get full name. So, um, however, there's, there's actually a better way of doing this in Dart, and I'll explain it to you right now. And that is by formatting your strings. So, let's say that you want to uh, basically tell Dart kind of like how your result looks like. And you want to ask Dart to insert the first name and last name into that result for you. And that's how you'll do it like this. You say, okay, I want to return a string denoted by the single quotation marks here. And you can also do a string in Dart with double quotation marks, but I'm going to explain that a little bit later. So let's say that you want to return the first name in here. But if you say first name, 
what's going to happen here is that it's actually going to take this first name as as you've written in the string. So when you get this return value, it's actually going to say first name, not the value that you pass to this. I know it may be a little bit um, difficult to understand when I say the value that you pass to this. What does it even mean? Uh, so let's put this actually to test first, okay? Go now into this build function, as you can see here on line 16. Now, it may not be on line 16 for you, but for me, it's at the moment on line 16. Just find this class my app stateful stateless widget and find this widget build stuff that's written there. Create a new line here, okay? And just say uh, full name or sorry, say print as I'm writing it here, print. And then just say, um, what do we call our function? Get full name. See here? And it says, okay, what's the first name? I'll say quotation marks foo. And the last name is bar. And end it with a uh, semicolon. So, and ignore this call for now. Uh, sorry, this uh, warning. Avoid print calls and production code. So, okay. So now we're calling that function. This is the it's, I mean, it's called calling, it's called invoking. It may have other names, but usually programmers call this calling, call the function. And these are the parameters that you're passing to this function, okay? So, uh, the, I mean, there are two words used for in the, in the programming world to explain these parameters, like with, with name, and that is called a parameter or an argument. I mean, they're used interchangeably. The meaning of them is kind of like getting uh, convoluted in, to the point that no one knows which one is which, but you could just use parameter or argument and everybody would understand what you're saying. So, But there's a little bit of a difference, which I'm not going to go into the detail of. But if someone just says, call this function with parameters or arguments, you know at least what you're doing, okay? Foo bar. Uh, now we're printing its value. All you have to do in order to execute this code is press command S and you will see the result uh, outputted here. Now, what we did here, um, what we did here was very a, a very key uh, feature in Flutter called hot reload. As you saw, I didn't execute my code again. I didn't press like the run button again. I just said save. Now, saving in Flutter triggers an action called hot reload. Hot reload in Flutter is it's a whole topic of its own, um, which I'm not going to go so much into detail of. But what hot reload does really is it looks for changes in in your code hierarchy without complicating it too much. I'm just trying to phrase my sentence right so that it's um, not too complicated for this chapter. It looks for changes that you made to the code and executes only those changes, okay? And in the process of executing those changes, it might execute everything else that is in its, uh, in its path. And by doing a save, this function gets called somehow magically, which I'm not going to go into right now, which in turn then calls or invokes our function called get full name, and its value will then be passed into another function called print. Okay? I hope that that made sense. Uh, and as you can see, the result isn't really what we expected. It just says first name. Uh, and that is because here we said return first name. And as you can see, if you put first name like this inside your string, it becomes its own string. It has nothing to do with this anymore. If you remove these quotation marks, however, then it says, oh, first name is this parameter. You see, it actually it highlights it. So then if I press Command S on Mac or Control S on Linux and Windows, you will see foo being printed to the screen. Okay? You can also say last name here, and it will say bar. Right? And know that, know, also notice that when I'm changing these things, it's not executing immediately, automatically, I'm pressing Command S. So just keep that in mind, please. So, so that's for a function. And But before we move on, um, 
explaining the basics of a function, I, I want to also explain a um, little bit about string formatting. And that is, we said that we're going to put first name and last name because this is what we did in the beginning, first name plus space plus last name. And this wasn't so pretty because it's like doing string concatenation in a very old fashioned manner. Uh, in, a, in a very old fashioned manner. Yeah, I, th I think I said it right the first time. Um, but what you want to do here is to uh, use uh, Dart's built in formatting capabilities. And you do that by first saying that, okay, I want to return some sort of a string. And I want to have first name, space, last name. But as you saw this earlier, if I command S or control S, it just returns those strings exactly as I've written them, not the parameters. What you can do is just to put a dollar before them. And you can see their coloring now changes depending on a theme that you're using or depending on the text editor that you're using. If you're using Android Studio, it may not color it the same way. Or if you're using Visual Studio Code with a different theme on a different maybe platform, it may not even change the color. But for me, at least you can see that the, change, the color has changed. So as to indicate that now I'm not actually returning the string exactly as you wrote, except I'm returning the parameters that are here. So command this, and now you can see that the result is foobar. Okay, so that is the basics of functions in um, in Dart. Before we move on uh, from functions, I also want to explain quickly that um, a function doesn't necessarily have to return anything, uh, and that means that you may have a function here that wants to just print some data to uh, the screen or to here to the debug console and you could just call it print my name and parentheses and curly brackets and as you can see here i can just write the name of the function without any data type to be returned but it's a little bit of a convention that you actually tell dart that this is a void function meaning void is a keyword as we talked about it earlier in the beginning of this um, chapter void is a keyword telling dart that this is a function that doesn't return anything and as you can see dart is completely fine with this function being completely empty meaning that well yeah you said you're not returning anything you're probably just going to do some stuff in here so i'm not going to bother you with some errors saying that oh you forgot to do something but as soon as you change the return value or the return data type of your function to, for instance, string, then you'll get an error uh, saying that, oh, yeah, the body might complete normally causing null to be returned, blah, blah. You don't have to know exactly what that means. But essentially what that means is you're telling Dart that you're returning a string, but you're not returning anything. It's literally looking for the return keyword saying that, oh, you missed it. So you could silence that uh, error by saying return an empty string, score, um, a semicolon. So I think this pretty much explains the basics of um, functions, to be honest with you. There's lots more to learn about functions. And as I said, functions can also be like written using this syntax. and this syntax is used when your function is very simple or in that it doesn't need to break into different lines of code uh, by a semicolon. So a function who has a very simple logic, you can just skip writing uh, these uh, square brackets. Uh, no, curly brackets, sorry. And you can just say, you see, I will re remove this, put equal sign, greater than sign, remove the closing curly bracket, and then you can remove the return statement, and that's it. That is a shorthand, that's a function shorthand in Dart, uh, and you could use it simply to simplify kind of your code. Some people may like it, some people kind of may, may be against it, um, just because it's um, it kind of splits your code into two different styles. Some functions are with uh, curly brackets, some functions are with this pointer thingy. And uh, kind of depends on your and you uh, on you and your team, to be honest. Um, I know usually from my um, 
from my experience, usually we software developers like to follow conventions. So in, in one in one project, the developers may decide, okay, we're just going to go with this convention. And since uh, using uh, curly brackets engulfs the ability to have both complicated and simple return statements in a function, it's actually preferred as a convention than using this syntax simply because this syntax doesn't allow you to split your code into separate lines of code. It has to all be in one statement. So if that makes any sense. So I think, I think that's it for functions. Uh, now we've talked about functions, arguments, return values. We've talked about variables, constants, data types, and keywords in Dart. And um, these are such important parts of learning how to program with Dart and Flutter that I think you need to spend some time and experiment with them. So do some experimentations on your own. For instance, take not don't take just the first name and last name. Just take, for instance, someone's address, someone's age, uh, different play around a little bit with different data types like integers, different numbers. Have a look at the link that I provided uh, earlier, which was here. I'll bring it up again so you can see that. Have a look at the, this link and have a look at the different examples of different data types, because in this uh, in the upcoming chapters and in the uh, rest of this course, we're going to play around with a lot of different types of data types. So I think it's important that you have a look a little bit uh, at the documentation as well. So let's leave this chapter at this point. Uh, and then in the next chapter, we're going to talk a lot more about more advanced uh, Dart programming language features. So thank you for joining me for this chapter and see you in the next one.